Hi, Ellen Wright, owner of Wright Family Law Group, Massachusetts Divorce and Family Law Lawyer. All right, let's decode what is marital and what is separate property in the context of a Massachusetts divorce. So if you've got a prenuptial or postnuptial agreement, it's really going to be probably super easy. We just look at the agreement and what the definition of marital property is and what separate property is. The agreement will dictate what those parameters are. <clears throat> when it gets dicey is when there is no prenup or postnup and it's a longer term marriage. So generally speaking, property that's purchased before the parties were married is considered separate property and property that might be gifted or inherited during the course of the marriage is considered separate property. Where it gets a little wonky is when separate property is used to purchase joint assets that are held in both of the parties' names. Then, a lot of the time, it can morph into marital property. Now, this happens more often than not in the case of a marital home. Let's say uh, <clears throat> husband and wife buy a house for $400,000 and $100,000 of the down payment came from the wife's family. If it's a four or five year marriage, it shouldn't be too hard to show the money trail leading back to wife. And in that case, the value of the home less the wife's down payment um, would be subject to marital division, that increase in value, that would basically be it. Now, where it gets sort of gray is in a long-term marriage. You know, if it's a marriage of 15, 20 years and there was money that came from, you know, a, a party's family, well, finding the money trail can be difficult. You know, go find a 15 or 20 year old bank statement or, or, or wire trail. Um, not gonna be altogether that easy. It's not always clear, but sometimes you can untangle the ball of yarn without too much difficulty. It really depends upon how long the parties have been married for. I hope this is helpful. Enjoy the day.